So Leanne is going to lead a participatory activity with you too. So I'm going to hand over with her same hands. Amazing, I missed that whole intro. Can everyone hear me? It's the first time I've been mic'd up like that. So my name's Leanne, and um, I'm going to get everybody involved in this session. Um, and it's based on the idea that in collaborations, the human element is significant. Um, uh, this image is actually... Um, so, as Heather pointed out, I'm either an artist or a scientist. So I'm a little bit cheeky. Oops. Um, but I am uh, the daughter of an artist, if that counts, and, uh, and a business entrepreneur, and I love science. And I've started writing a, um, a blog for Sci Art in America, which is, and there was a post uh, where this image came from. And uh, the image is actually called the, um, the collect, uh, Collective Invention. It's by Rene Mascarene. Okay. Um, I thought it was a lovely example of science and art coming together. So the work that I do, so my background, I'm, I my master's is in sustainability and leadership. Um, and the work that I do okay, that to to. Um, responds to this quote from Maria Popova. In, uh, we live in a world awash of information, but we seem to face a growing scarcity in wisdom. So the work that I do is all about um, participatory leadership and getting, um, whether it's in an organisation or a community, getting everybody involved in responding to the big questions and the challenges facing that group of people. In, in 2012, um, I was part of a hosting team international climate change conference called Planet Under Pressure, and we offered six participatory sessions. There was 3,000 scientists at each participatory session. We had maybe 50 scientists come along. And then since then, I've been excited about working more with scientists. And this year I ended up going to um, Southern Technologies uh, Festival and they bring art and science together so they're all about interdisciplinary um, collaborations. And the theme this year is participatory practices in art and science. And I co-hosted a um, session on um, uh, effective participation. And we got everybody out of the lecture theatres. It was quite surprising that most of the festival happened in a lecture theatre. We got them out of the lecture theatre and talking to each other. So this is going to be a little taster of that. It's based on the, the idea that the quality of our relationships impacts the quality of our collective thinking and our actions. So in our collaborations, whether it's interdisciplinary or not, um, I, I believe there needs to be more space for practicing uh, the, relationship, the relationship skills that we need. So it's going to be the second time this evening. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and only briefly. So the lights don't need to go off, so that's fine. So if everyone can close their eyes, and uh, if you can imagine. So this exercise is about um, our visions of success. Um, but in this instance, we're going to imagine a monster. So it might be the monster you found under your, found under your bed or in the kid's book. It, um, if you can imagine how many eyes has it got, what kind of skin has it got, perhaps it's got a name. Okay, so now open your eyes. If you can all grab a pen. There should be some pens on the tables. <coughs> We need a pen and a
you and I can okay. do this together. Um, you'll have to bear with me also. So take it at the same time. So, um, in silence and taking turns, we're going to draw a monster in our pairs. So it's in silence. You're taking turns. Whenever your pen comes off the piece of paper, it's the next person's turn. Um, and at some point, uh, once you've drawn your monster together, um, you're going to silently decide and finish the monster, and you're going to name the monster one letter at a time. Are there any questions about this? How long is it lonely? A line can be, it can be a mark, a squiggle, or a line. It's when you lift off your pen that it's then the other person's turn. Great. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes in this. In the silence. Monster one letter at a time.
something and it was kind of hard first to like, let go of that but it's good to let go of the monsters so um and then i got really impressed i mean i know this man but i i'm really impressed that he just can draw um beautiful things with one line um so
so if you swap over, you've got two minutes. <laughs> Um, and I think it was vice versa if I could say that. Um, 
Because if you're going to express empathy, you have to be able to give some kind of reaction, I think, verbally, as well as, um, let's say, showing your emotion. Um, so yeah, that was a difficulty for me, not saying anything at all. We found there was a very peculiar sensation, particularly because we reckon that some of the most valuable parts of the conversation are actually, I think it's friction would be the wrong way of describing it, but in the way that you gain access to someone else's perspective on your own ideas, and a curious way, whereas it's a very useful exercise in terms of reading <laughs> to another person's perspective, all of those curious moments where there's something that they've said and it sparks up an idea or you want to um, come back to it, but if you're the wrong share, you want some response to it, or things that you want another perspective on, you have to recall in your brain. And it's almost like those little moments, those points of intersection where you could engage with someone about the way they looked at the way you think, or vice versa. You just get lost. Just like one, their one moment and gone the next, that kind of uh, very fluid nature of conversation. So it's in a weird way very useful for, uh, for understanding the other person's position, but quite dangerous in terms of losing those important moments of communication. Thank you. 